when we are looking at an empty canvas and the first stroke has not been done yet. It's like experiencing the everlasting beginning of creation. At the moment, nothing is potentially everything. Perhaps in the nothing moment, there is a source of peace and inspiration. Inspiration to become yourself, which simply means changing this world. Each dimension is a separate language. In order to understand the language of dimension, to read it, or at least to imagine a different dimension in the form of an abstract model, we need to stretch out peculiar threads of continuity, connecting the distant abstractions of the absolute with our three-dimensional container of mind and feelings. Therefore, in this film, there are so many distant examples, one way or another leading to a single whole. Matter is supposedly 99% empty. The remaining percentage is elementary particles, strings. And at the same time, it is chaos. The uncertainty of an elementary particle, which is reflected in the famous quantum experiment with two slits, where only in the presence of an observer, a particle is defined as a particle and in the absence of an observer, as a wave. At a speed close to the speed of light, time slows down. Therefore, light seems to have power over time. Perhaps light and our consciousness have some common basis. When understanding occurs in our brain, it happens outside of time. That is, we kind of buy time by understanding. This is a common point of contact of thoughts. And at this moment, we receive knowledge. Man, as consciousness, is the fifth dimension. We are human beings, from birth to death, and there are those who measure time. The boundaries of each dimension are arbitrary. There cannot be an accurate device that is capable of tracking the boundary of any quantity. Otherwise, we will intersect with our other dimensions. For example, is it possible to answer the question, how long is the moment between two moments? Thus, we can already have an approximate understanding of the six dimensions, volume, time, and consciousness. The first three dimensions are intuitively close to our perception, so it is more interesting to imagine and try to understand other, not obvious dimensions. Consciousness is subject to the influence of higher, hidden from our eyes dimension. The world is already perfect and complete, but the person is not. And trying to know ourselves, we turn to the unknown, to the mystical. We are looking for anomalies in the world. And through them, we strive to justify a miracle. Miracle as an explanation of this world. And since we are part of the universe, and are made of the same materials as it, we have access to information about its structure. Complex dimensions are inside and more primitive ones are outside. For example, dimension number zero can literally be seen only outside the universe, more precisely outside the Big Bang. 
Only there, nothing will distract from the unity of the universe. The same point, a nail in an endless canvas called nothing. And the universe itself is only an absolute set of elementary particles, or rather, one single particle in superposition. The center of the universe is in every particle. And in order to analyze what an elementary particle is woven from, we must look deep into ourselves, our consciousness, into the fifth dimension. Infinitely decreasing, the system of consciousness itself does not feed into a volume that is smaller than an elementary particle. Overcoming Planck's constant, the observer falls into another dimension and another reality. Moral choice, moral freedom, or ideals are safe encrypted in higher dimensions. In our world, there is no place for ideal things, but striving for the ideal is an integral part of the human psyche. Probably, each of us has experienced strange and inexplicable coincidences, seemingly occurring in a mystical way. We often try to explain it rationally, that it is just a coincidence and we do not always realize that synchronicity is a projection of our psyche. For example, due to the difficulty of understanding a random event in a certain situation, a person determines this for himself by conspiracy. Conspiracy theory is a psychological defense against defenselessness, mentally believing that somewhere there is a hidden villain or a corporation person assumes the presence of some kind of superpower and thereby refuses to recognize its insignificance before eternity. Indeed, it is much more painful to come to terms with the fact that the world of real is an absolutely uncontrollable platform. In fact, the truth cannot be united. People are not agreed on issues of faith, morality and values. It is much more difficult to accept this fundamental inconsistency of humanity than to believe in the Ark Villain. It doesn't matter if the villain really exists. The psychological aspect of conspiracy theory is the search for parents, the search for an elder who knows more, but we will not delve into this. Conspiracy is a surrogate of faith, a fast food faith, a reverse cult driven by paranoia. Presumably, the dimensions above the fifth are located in the Kalabayao manifolds. If the atom were in the fifth dimension, then the molecule would be the sixth, only that the molecule would be inside the atom. That is, the molecular structure is already programmed in the elementary particle itself. And in space, all these particles have to do is to magnetize to each other and reproduce matter. This simply means that the structure of the universe is written inside an elementary particle. 
To some extent, each dimension has a part of the other dimension. This can be felt by taking a glimpse at the yin-yang symbol. And this system of dimension itself is dual. It has both material and spiritual components. The symbols contain a huge amount of information in their small conceptual form. Someone may consider the point as the whole universe. Someone consider the cross as the meaning of life. Religion, the science, art, cultures and traditions of people. In a system, history, evolution of life. These notions may be figuratively represented as memory structures with ordered information. All of these are archetypes of one kind or another. At the heart of architecture, we can also find archetypal knowledge of man. The harmony and symmetry in the geometry of the locks and cathedrals reflect the human desire to improve the system, the spiritual morality and ideal beauty. Archetypes can be seen as some kind of primordial ordering of life. The seventh dimension is energy and energy interchange. It is a kind of self that helps the archetypes to obtain its form. The universe is, so to speak, pierced with superstrings throughout itself. This is a kind of energy ocean, and all the particles on the grid of existence are inextricably linked with each other. By the least resistance, this force gives impulse to action, like the first breath of a newborn, at the moment of which the whole plan for his life is written, dependent on the place and time of birth. Energy properly contained in the body ensures the health of the subject. This ore seems to remind of desires and needs. This is probably as a result of the dark energy that forms the matter and we always feel it. The influence of the ego on the thinking is well described in both psychology and philosophy. An uncontrolled unconscious ego leads to a state of affection as well as pride. For the full fleshed operation of the ontological system, the ego of the system itself needs people. The ego of people needs food and information. It's like instinct. that objects to affect people. A person who treats his car as a living being is usually more adequate on the road than one who drives an iron bucket with bolts, and the car itself will serve faith.
but only after stepping over the ego when it accumulates the necessary resource. In abundance, we make a choice in favor of development. Philosophers, biologists, and religious scholars have been able to prove the existence of free will for a long time. Free will is about making a choice and not making a choice. Considering the possibility of not making a choice, we can always speculate which choice would be more profitable. The measurement of free will is about the superposition of particles, when there are so many of them that the world can already be a self-organizing system. And only a conventional framework and size to eternity can give free will to this world. Higher dimensions are not more complex material structures or quantum physics that we do not understand. Perhaps these are simple things related to human values such as compassion, generosity, kindness, or conscience, which cause us to find an answer to the question of the meaning of life, our purpose, and fulfillment. Making a choice will develop, build civilizations, and particle accelerators. We agree that we are subject to our impulse and act on the basis of it, but this is material. Spiritually, we degrade along with spiral of development towards the ego, but it is precisely the absence of an answer to the question of the existence of free will that gives us an incentive to go forward. This is an incessant dialogue in our head that gives hope. is still in search of a miracle and believes in the correctness of his choice. In case of not making a choice, we have to face a monstrous problem with eternity. We plunge into the deepest opening in a new way, the border of our being, and gaze into the abyss, with the impossibility of realizing the scales of meaninglessness. begins to reveal its secret to the observer, tempting him to make a choice and cling to the illusion. But how long can you not make a choice?
This film is about consciousness and awareness. About when duality ceases to exist and unity begins. Man invented eternity for the convenience of solving equations and functions, but it is beyond the reach of the brain. Therefore, it pulls us so much as incomprehensible and frightening. Eternity is an abstract concept of the human mind, and dimension are labels of the brain, such as archetypes, on which you can throw examples for comparisons from different aspects of life. Abstractions, including any eternity, are in the ninth dimension, as if including all possible potential or real variants of each point of the multiverse. The system developing in the image of similarity, while developing endlessly, will remain similar to itself. The old moment will happen again, one to one, and everything will repeat itself. of the two extremes allows us to think critically. For example, the opposite of the concept of eternity is the moment. Let's compare two combinations, a moment at eternity and eternity in a moment. Operating in our thinking with several infinities, we somehow incomprehensibly accommodate in our imagination the control of them, and we are between two infinities. Abstractions of any complexity that the human brain is capable of are in any case amenable to indirect control. And only using logical thinking and imagination, we will be able to rise above this dimension. Perhaps imagination is some kind of field or property of self-organizing systems. Be that as it may, the infinite power of imagination allows us to survive in the finite world. And eternity ends at the moment when we realize that we have created eternity, that we are creating it right now and we will create forever until we realize and withdraw our attention. In a creative state connects a person with higher dimensions, from which inspiration for masterpieces and scientific discoveries is drawn. Creativity is probably true wealth. Gratuitous return means that we no longer need anything. The 
doesn't the fact that we are already here mean that we will succeed in the future? It will turn out to create ourselves as it once happened. We will figure out how the universe works, and at its sunset we will launch the creation of a new one. Where there is creation, there is potentially everything, and at the same time, complete nothingness. This is a blank canvas of the multiverse, and each of us is an artist in it. Here, everything that one can imagine coexists with the absolute nothing of the coordinate creed of being. We create where our attention is directed. Other dimensions adjust to us. Ingenuity and unique style are born in the creative act. Creativity implies improvisation, which means creating quality things in the present moment through symbiosis and hybridization. Creation is a process when it is already necessary to create. In the end, you have no choice but to create. It's like breathing out. Breathing in imagination and bringing out reality. hundreds of footprints still make it difficult to hear yourself. We need to devalue this dimension too in order to compare it to nothing, because only in comparison do we know the true meaning of being. In every dimension, there are extremes, anomalies. They contain bridges to other dimensions. Anomaly is a way out, thanks to which we move to a new level of development. This is the key to getting in touch with the impossible for us. absolute limit of novelty or transcendental objects at the end of time eternally in touch with the present absolute nothing reality or an observer who has no problem it connects the highest and the lowest dimensions through nirvana Come to this dimension through faith. Faith implies a miracle. 
and all people at some deep level still believe in it. But the world itself and this life is a miracle. If we want to find a paradox, then it is not here. The paradox was there in the mind, the simultaneous finding of a particle in a superposition. The world itself is paradoxical, but there can be no longer a miracle in a miracle. Each person comes to understand God in his own way. Faith is inherent in us genetically. An atheist believes no less than a churchgoer believes, according to modern psychology. Faith is a logical mistake, a human stupidity without which we cannot exist. Thus is what makes us human. The intuitive logic of emotional intelligence implies that each of us alone at least once experienced absolute amazement at the accuracy of the universe, like a living miracle right in front of us. From a religious point of view, the eleventh dimension is God. From an agnostic point of view, the eleventh dimension is the highest degree of order irrespective of itself. And when you humble yourself that you are the same bio robot before God, like all other people, you become vulnerable. The living God can be approached without postulates and paradigms, being God himself. The last moment will happen at the last moment. With our eyes, we see two dimensions. The picture is projected into our brain in the form of a plane. At almost every moment in time, if I may say so, we see a flat picture. But even a two-dimensional world can push us to become aware of the world with a much larger number of dimensions. One-dimensional objects, two-dimensional objects, objects of zero dimension, which are essentially a point, and the rest of the dimension exists only in our head. These are perfect geometrical shape that we will not find exactly repeated in the material world. You have to understand that at every moment in time, which means always, we are perfect, and there is no point in running away from it. There is knowledge of the truth within every person, but it is so uncontrollable that we cannot describe and prove it to each other. Therefore, it turns out that either the truth is different for everyone, or it is not. We receive different ideas and concepts from the outside world, putting ourselves in the place of the ideal. And every time we trust and analyze them, Comparing them with true perfection in the present moment, then these ideas fill and go away. Some hold on longer because they are invented in the image and likeness of human thinking and are eager to hypnotize a person for a while. But over time, new people with the concept of an open mind remove these ideas because these concepts are only archetypes. If a person could create an ideal of truth for himself, he would be immortal, because this ideal would shine on a person like a beacon and would not allow him to turn in the wrong direction. But there are no true ideals. Faith is a lesson, but also an engine of life. This system of dimension is not closed, because there is already eternity in it. And this is precisely the loophole for the mind for which there is still hope. Hope to know the whole world. Operating with eternity 
In a system of dimensions, the mind can slightly rise above its own paradigm and qualitatively process data about reality and about itself as an integral part of this very reality. Knowledge of this system is a postulate that is worth remembering in order to maintain mental health. Explanation is not self-knowledge. From the point of view of perception, self-knowledge is indistinguishable from being, just as being is indistinguishable from existence. And being does not need any explanation at all. Everything in the world is equal. Every action has a reaction. At the highest point of being, light is equal to darkness. Life is equal to death. Everything equals everything. <laughs>